What is the oddest thing you thought was okay slash normal and ended up being a medical problem? Story one. I thought I pulled a muscle playing with my dogs one day. One week later, I finally go to the hospital because the pain is getting worse. Turns out I suffer from a genetic blood clotting condition and had a two-foot log clot in my leg and multiple pulmonary embolisms on my lungs. Doctor was legit surprised I was alive. Story two. I'd have these really minor facial twitches, like a single small muscle in my upper lip or eyebrow, nothing even severe enough to be visible by others. However, they'd last for a few weeks straight, even while I was trying to sleep. I didn't think twice about it. They always went away on their own, after all. After I suddenly went blind in my left eye and got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, I connected the dots. Edit. Facial twitches are normal. Just because you have twitches often doesn't mean you have a problem, especially if you don't have any other reason to believe you have multiple sclerosis or any other disease. My twitches were constant for weeks, and even then there are other less serious and probably more likely things that can cause that. Please don't let my comments stress you out. Story 3. My family told me I would randomly space out, although I never remembered. All thought it was normal. Turned out I was having absence seizures. We only found that out at a routine doctor's appointment, just conversing with the doc, when I guess I just came to and the doctor said she wanted to get a bunch of tests done. Been an epileptic for almost 17 years now. Edit. I woke up to all these upvotes and replies and was shocked. TBH to see how many of my Reddit fam has or had what I have. Unfortunately, my epilepsy has evolved into tonic-clonic seizures. I rarely have absences anymore, but had one focal back in November. For anyone who has friends and or family who has seizures and epilepsy, thank you for being there for them. Just know we appreciate you all. For all that have seizures and epilepsy, unite. Love you all, Reddit fam. You're the best. Story 4. It took my lungs collapsing at 17 years old before doctors realized I wasn't breathing in deeply enough to expand the bottom half of my lungs for basically my whole life. They asked why I never complained about shortness of breath. I never knew breathing was supposed to be easier than what I was experiencing. Story 5. As a kid, I had anxiety and my heart would race. Fast. It felt like a hummingbird in my chest and would abruptly pause and resume a normal pace after a few minutes. At age 23, I had a bad reaction to a tricyclic antidepressant called imipramine and was rushed to the hospital. They ran an EKG and that rapid heart rate was a congenital defect known as Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. Basically, I had an accessory or second electrical system in my heart that would cause a short circuit occasionally, and my heart rate would skyrocket. It was cured via a procedure using radio waves to form scar tissue around the accessory node because the impulse could not conduct through the tissue. No problem since. Story 6. Not me, but one of my brother's friends in high school. This friend was a goober, always making silly but friendly jokes that make families laugh as a whole. All in all, a genuinely funny person. One day, he took my sister's glasses and was acting like her, only to pause for a moment and then say, Wait, is this how things are supposed to look? My man needed glasses and found out from fucking around. I'm glad the universe leaned towards him in a positive way as far as that went. Story 7. Losing weight suddenly got a little easier, and I assumed it was due to my efforts. Happy with my success, I buckled down harder. Funny how it's easy to keep being good when you're actually seeing results. I lost more. It actually got to be almost easy. I thought I was doing such a great job. Turns out it was cancer. I guess I should have known something was up, but I honestly thought I was just doing a really great job with my diet and exercise. Had four surgeries and treatment, and I'm doing well. Now I'm on meds with all kinds of side effects, including weight gain. Yay. But I'm alive, and so much better off than many others. I've only gained a little bit back, despite working really hard not to. Story 8. Not sleeping for days at a time. Intense euphoria, being impulsive, feeling on top of the world, and then crashing just to crawl into bed for a month or more. I thought I was just an exciting, strange girl who got depressed sometimes. Story 9. Inattentive ADHD. Got diagnosed at 54 and my life all suddenly made sense. It was like riding a bike with a flat tire and wondering why pedaling appeared to be so much easier for everyone else. Being told I'm sometimes too lazy or a dreamer, etc. Then learning at age 54 the existence of tire pumps and being able to keep up. Game changer. Still annoys me that all along this medication was available and could have helped decades ago. Story 10. General stomach pain that I dismissed as perhaps constipation but which would, every few years or so, send me to emergency worrying that it was my appendix. I was kicked out of emergency departments at different hospitals multiple times because it was not. I moved to a new city, 
and was lucky enough to score a decent family doctor who took it seriously. She told me she was rather impressed with the amount of referred pain I was having and that I should go straight to emergency. I replied that there was not a hope in hell I would subject myself to that kind of humiliation again. No way. She sent me for a CAT scan, and lo and behold, it was my appendix. She referred me to a surgeon, and on the day of my surgery, no one in the hospital seemed particularly interested in my condition. I think most of the medical staff thought I was having unnecessary surgery, though. Curiously, they were much nicer to me afterward. I recall a lot of people standing over me in the recovery room. The surgeon called me to come in for a meeting a couple of weeks later, and when I walked into his office, he had an odd expression on his face. He told me my appendix was many times the normal size, probably because it had been infected and healed over the years, building up scar tissue. He asked me if I minded if he wrote it up in a medical paper or a textbook. I can't remember exactly which. He taught at the university. I gather at the time, grumbling appendixes were a bit of a unicorn, and there had been much debate over whether they were real. So I guess my appendix settled that argument in the medical community once and for all. Story 11. I kept telling my OB I was worried about my legs slash ankles swelling in the later part of my pregnancy. They dismissed it, told me all pregnant people experience it. At 39 weeks, I got sent to the hospital for extra monitoring on the baby due to an irregular test. She ended up being fine, but my blood pressure was crazy high. I was induced that night and then given an emergency C-section due to severe preeclampsia. Not a fun start to my baby's life, but she's here and healthy, so I can't be too upset. Story 12. Bent over to pick something up and felt a twinge in my groin. I'm male. I thought perhaps it may be a hernia. I wasn't too concerned about it, then things started to ache a bit. I went to the doctor only to find out I had testicular cancer. Fortunately, after we cut out Lefty and got all the results back from pathology, It was staged at 1A seminoma, meaning the surgery alone was all the treatment I needed. Story 13. Had what I thought was a pimple on my armpit that I ignored. Wasn't overly concerned. Thought it was something that would just go away. A few weeks later, I came down with what I thought was some sort of flu. The flu lasted longer than normal, so I decided to go to the emergency room to get checked out. Turned out that I had a large tumor in my chest caused by lymphoma and the pimple on my armpit was actually a swollen lymph node. Story 14. Sometimes getting tingly feet. I thought I was just worn out from the day or anxious. Nope. Multiple sclerosis. If you get numbness, fatigue, headaches that ibuprofen helps, but not paracetamol. Tingling in your hands or feet. Off balance. Forgetful brain fog. Please get checked out. Especially if you have ADHD, as some of those symptoms can be written off as ADHD. Edit. How I got diagnosed. All the symptoms I put down as something else. My ADHD, anxiety, having a toddler, getting older. This time last year, I started having seizures. The pee your pants, jiggle on the floor type. The neurologist put me on anti-seizure meds, thinking it was epilepsy while I waited to get an MRI. The MRI showed I have white matter lesions, basically scar tissue, in my temporal lobe that had become inflamed. Temporal lobe is where most seizures come from. Seizures aren't very common in MS, but still a possibility. Confirmed with a lumbar puncture. Find an MS checklist from a reputable website, fill it in, and take it to your appointment. Story 15. Mouth would be itchy when I ate most fruits. Parents told me to stop being dramatic and making excuses to be picky. I have OAS and have an EpiPen now. Also had terrible cramps and would get my period for a whole month, then not for three as a teenager. My doctor said that could happen sometimes and put me on BC. Turns out my cramps were chronic cysts from PCOS. My body is overproducing testosterone and it was affecting a lot of other aspects of my health. Story 16. I didn't realize other people didn't hallucinate. When people would say, did you say something? I thought I heard someone say my name. I thought it was the same thing as me hearing voices. Apparently, when people think they heard a voice that wasn't there, that was very different than me screaming and crying and praying, because I heard a scary voice say awful things and didn't know where it was coming from. Story 17. Finally one I can answer was diagnosed with a habit cough, but then I started developing intense pain in my legs when walking even short distances. I had blood work done, and my doctor told me to go to the ER immediately. I got diagnosed with a blood clot in my heart, and blood clots in my legs with heart failure and kidney failure. I had fluid around my heart, which explains the cough. I was 21 years old when this happened, and I'm 24 now. I'll be on medication for the rest of my life that keeps my heart from failing again and I'll need a kidney transplant at some point in the future. 
My medical goal is to keep my kidneys functioning for as long as possible. Turns out that sometimes a cough isn't just a harmless tick. Story 18. I got sick one weekend. Fever, chills, swollen lymph nodes in my neck, etc. By Monday morning, it had gone away. Except one lymph node returned to its normal size and the other did not. I felt fine and was in no pain, so I didn't worry about it. Some months later, it's still swollen and I've developed a mild, persistent sore throat. Very mild pain. Like when you've snored all night and wake up with a dry, sore throat. But you get something to drink and it goes away. Except mine didn't go away. So I go to see an ear, nose, and throat guy who sticks a scope of some sort up my nose and down my throat. Not sure how that works, but whatever. He sees some reason for concern, but isn't sure what it is. He sends me for a scan, then sends me for a scan with contrast, then sends me for a biopsy, and it's throat cancer. After much consulting with a sizable team of cancer specialists, they tell me that I have a protein in my blood called P17 IIRC, and that because of that protein, my prognosis is good. But since I am otherwise strong and healthy, they are going to take a very aggressive approach and give me their harshest regimen. So, on the one hand, that sounded good. On the other hand, not so much. I asked what caused this cancer. I was told that they can't be certain, but it is typically caused by exposure to HPV, which is the human papillomavirus. Remember that weekend I was sick? Was that it? Anyway, remember when Michael Douglas embarrassed his wife by claiming the throat cancer he got was from performing cunnilingus? Well, he wasn't full of shit. Apparently, I had munched some tainted poon and suffered the consequences. End result, after a couple months of daily radiation treatments and more chemo than I ever want again, I was told the cancer was in remission. Yay! But there was something in my lower abdomen on that last scan that bore looking into. Multiple colonoscopies and another biopsy later, I was diagnosed with colon cancer. Well, that sucks. But the throat cancer showed no signs of spreading. The colon cancer was a completely independent development. My layman's guess would be from drinking potable water tainted with diesel fuel while serving aboard ship while I was in the Navy. The good news was that the colon cancer was easily removed, along with my colon, by a single surgery. Samples from 18 surrounding lymph nodes showed no signs of it spreading either. No radiation or chemo were required, and I was grateful for that because the first time was rough and left me anemic with hypothyroidism, lost about 70 pounds because I wasn't able to eat for about 10 weeks, and have basically had no energy or stamina since. Still, I'm alive and all good, right? Maybe not, just had my annual physical and my PSA was high. It was 0.3 last year and 13.2 this year. This is indicative of a prostate problem. Might be nothing, might be something. In any event, I'm off to the urologist next week and my doctor cannot rule out that another adventure in oncology might be in my future. I used to joke about having throat cancer and colon cancer, saying I'd have much preferred testicular cancer and colon cancer to they could have got me coming and going. Now, it seems maybe they did. Chin up though, right? I'm currently undefeated versus cancer and that establishes a trend. Story 19. I was having another stressful argument in 2003 when I heard a ringing. My heart started beating fast and I couldn't understand speech nor speak myself. This was for around 30 sec. I knew something was wrong and called the advice nurse. She laughed at me and told me I had a panic attack. No, I didn't. Turns out it was a petit mal seizure. I know because I suddenly became epileptic at 27. I was told they didn't know why, but now I realize it was stress-induced. Story 20. When I was about 19, I randomly heard on NPR that it takes the average person around 20 minutes to fall asleep. And I went, oh shit, because apparently my bar for having sleep issues was way, way too high. To me, a good night's sleep meant I fell asleep within two hours of going to bed. And it wasn't trouble until I hit three hours. And once I communicated this to my doctor and was finally able to treat my crippling insomnia with medication, my depression and anxiety suddenly got way more manageable as well. Story 21. I smell things that don't exist. I casually mentioned to my doctor and it turns out they're a type of seizure. He wanted to put me on meds. I said I thought that was a bit much and didn't want them. But according to him, and later, a neurologist, they can turn into grand mal seizures. So I've been on anticonvulsant meds for 20 years. Story 22. I'm likely not articulating correctly, but I thought my not going outside and fear of people was me just adjusting to living in a new country. Turns out I have CPTSD from my childhood. I've been living in the new country for a decade, and if anything, I have gotten worse. A visit to my parents last year after many years away kind of broke me in a sense, 
And long story short, I am seeing a psychiatrist in a few months. He comes very highly recommended, so there is a wait to try and get this fixed. To anyone reading who has kids and is living in domestic violence, this is one possible outcome. I don't talk to my parents anymore. I know it's hard to leave, but please think of your children and their well-being. If you can't think of your children's well-being, please consider whether you want a relationship with them when they're adults. Story 23. My hands and fingers are extremely flexible. I only started to think it was strange when people looked at me like I'm insane because I'd bend my fingers all the way back. I was diagnosed with hypermobility, and my doctor told me that it's not really a medical problem, but it can lead to injuries, which is annoying because I have to be so careful with my fingers. It's like I'm a contortionist LMAO. Story 24. All of my life, I was the last person running in PE I could run, but not at the pace or the consistency of everyone else. Anyway, every time I told someone that I got a burning can't breathe feeling, they'd tell me I was out of shape and needed to train harder. So I thought everyone gets this feeling and I'm just being lazy. Also, it seemed to piss off middle-aged PE teachers like I personally planned to challenge their authority. I had coughing attacks at night once and went to the doctor to find out I've always had asthma. Story 25, 16 years old, severe pain, couldn't keep food down or stand to walk, lots of blood and urine, told me it was just my period. Lowell, it was eight kidney stones. They didn't scan me until two weeks later because they refused to believe it could be stones even though a resident on rounds called it straight away. Doc didn't want to take them seriously or me. Story 26. Feeling like you're going to pass out, slash, passing out every time you stand up. And getting a very intense head rush isn't normal. Apparently, I have low blood volume and was anemic. I no longer get the head rush because I got treated for anemia. Edit. Also having your tongue tingle when you're not allergic to anything slash haven't even eaten anything apparently isn't normal, but my doctor can't figure out the cause. Story 27 sharp excruciating pain in my hand. Thought it was arthritis. It runs in the family. Nope. Bone tumor. Thankfully non-malignant. Slowly eating its way through my hand. Two surgeries. One to remove the tumor. One to get bone graft from my femur. Done at once. Some cadaver bone. Lots of excruciating physical therapy and a gnarly scar later. No more pain. Story 28. Blacking out when you stand multiple times a day. Dizziness at all exercise. Eating always being painful, uncomfortable. Choking on vomit while you sleep. Limbs and face just tingling randomly. Standing being painful. Bowel movements 5 tilde plus times a day. Passing out in temps above 90 degree. Body-wide numbness. Foods being on a rotating cycle of least painful and incredibly painful. I could go on. Orthostatic hypertension, GERD, and moderately severe IBS. Changed my diet and got on blood pressure meds and I'm leagues better. Go figure. Story 29. I didn't know I needed glasses until I was nearly 30. I knew grass was a thing. I'd felt it, but it had always just been a green mess on the ground that I didn't think much about. Got a prescription for glasses due to wondering why I had headaches all the time and no joke. It was like flicking on high-definition switch the first time I put those glasses on outside. Boom. Grass is made of lots of leaves of grass and not a smear of green everywhere. Story 30. Serious joint injuries. Everyone has aches and pains, but it turns out you're not supposed to have two significant spinal injuries before 32 plus shoulder tendinitis. My brother has the same shit happening. Hypermobility spectrum disorder is definitely hereditary. 